at that point. Um, and I think from guys like Zach, uh, who's probably, you know, uh, off the top of my head at least, he's probably the most impressive vertical plane athlete we've ever seen. When I picture Zach Levine, I think of one of the great aerial artists in sports history. The dude is a hovering basketball arena. But when he went to Chicago, it wasn't those dunks for days that caught my eye. It was his explosive first step, which made him a lethal penetrator. With such a slender frame, Levine was a blur off the bounce, both with his first move and then with the all-important second and third strides covering a ton of distance and using his vertical gifts at the basket. Back in 2019, he generated more than half of his offense from the rim or the free throw line, elite territory for a guard, and that gave him some of the highest rim frequency marks of the last two decades. So naturally, you'd think penetration was the backbone of his first all-star season in 2021, yet it wasn't. Levine's driving game is still a big part of his story, and we'll come back to it in a minute, but he's quietly become one of the most prolific shooters in all of basketball. There are no caveats here. He's just a really dangerous sniper from long range, ranking sixth in the entire league in catch and shoot accuracy over the last two seasons. Some of these are from way downtown. And while he's good from above the break, he's been great in the corners, drilling 46% from there as a bull. These aren't just pitch a tent and spot up threes. Levine can float into catch and release jumpers all over the court. And while it's not a lightning quick shot, he can organize himself in the air like this, even on really deep attempts. A lot of Zach's offense is on the move, able to play a little two-man game with his big and flow into jumpers. And he's comfortable in general with taking handoffs like this and getting into that high elevation jumper. He can also catch it and drive on these kinds of actions, and at about 6'5", he'll finish these over smaller defenders. Because he's dangerous coming off handoffs, the back door opens up, and this is another area where his quickness unlocks value, making these pet plays a little bit harder to guard. I love this one from the opening week, where he face cuts Fred Van Vliet after threatening to cut behind him. Right there, he rocks Fred and then trampolines into a shot blocker for free throws. Levine's quickness is a weapon with the basketball too, where he comes off screens and changes directions, then bursts into space past a defender to the other side of the cup. He has a little right to left crossover he goes to. It's a bit high and probably illegal, but it's way too quick for slow-footed big men. Later in the same quarter, they defend the handoff differently, so Zach dribbles back off one foot, then explodes around the corner for another reverse layup. His ball handling is solid enough, especially his right hand, that he can probe a little before hitting the gas and covering a ton of ground. Levine uses a ton of these starts and stops, jagged little dances to freeze defenders, and whoa, look out. He's got dunks for days. These hesitations perfectly set up his step back. Defenders have to honor the dribble drive, and that quick hop backwards off his lead leg creates a ton of space for three-pointers off the bounce. I love how hard he plants that lead foot inside the three-point line against defenders who are conditioned to guard the paint only to rip back for a three. He can hop off of either leg, and he'll even go sideways a bit to increase separation with his defender. Sometimes he just throws in a full sidestep and rains down missiles on the basket, which led to 25 games with at least four threes last year, and his elevation allows him to comfortably fire these over most defenders. This is actually where Levine has become a high-end scorer. He's got extended range in his package, and he can torch drop coverage with fairly high percentage looks from behind the line. In the last two years, he's taken more pull-up threes per minute than all but seven players in the entire league, while landing in the 76th percentile in accuracy. 
And this might blow your mind, but that gives Levine a James Harden shot profile. 81% of his field goals are from three or at the rim, and his 2020 season places fifth in threes plus rim attempts over the last 20 years. Since he's fairly efficient at the basket and from behind the line, Levine's scoring numbers were near the top of the league last season with a similar trajectory early in 2022. He's added weight to his frame in the last few years, which has chipped away a touch at that first step, but it allows him to absorb more contact on drives. This is still nice burst, and those long strides are effective, but he's not regularly carving up defenses and setting up his teammates like the league's elite playmakers. It's almost paradoxical given his explosiveness, but the majority of Zach's shot creation involves dumping it off to his roll man like this. The Bulls put the ball in his hands a lot, and this does create offense, a kind of tax for defenses trapping him like this. But it's also the dink and dunk version of playmaking, setting up long jumpers for big men. The best playmakers in the sport not only hit the screener, but they spray the ball all around to everyone out of these actions. Levine looks for his big man early, and it's a perfectly fine decision, but not one that manufactures great shots for the entire team. He doesn't regularly take an extra dribble here, especially with his weaker left hand. And while this reset turns into a short roll possession that works for Chicago, that extra dribble forces a defensive reaction that drives great offense. This is something I discuss in Kevin Durant's peak profile. Zach does have a nice little one-handed pocket pass in these spots. Again, it's almost exclusively right-handed. And his telescoping on the roll man alone allows him to find the occasional high leverage dime. That's a gorgeous shot pass to Vooch. But he also has some tunnel vision because of it, where he's looking only to the roll man as an outlet if his own offense isn't there. And he can force it to the screener in these actions where he rarely makes the all-important skip pass because of this, either here above the break or to the dangerous corner pocket. Some of this is vision, but some of it is delivery. He sees this cut, but telegraphs the pass. Then he's not quite comfortable changing sides, which is often the case. For Zach's playmaking to really move the needle, I'd want to see more plays like this, where he probes into the teeth of the defense and finds home runs or even triples. But remember, his first step is a touch slower, and he doesn't have the broad frame to shoulder his way into space. His handle isn't quite strong enough to flow from a drive to a pass on plays like this regularly, and that's just a bit outside. You know what it was? I got too comfortable, and I started to get fancy. Okay, what about his defense? Levine's interesting on that end because of his ability to stay with point guards and quicker players in general. He matches up quite a bit with smalls like John ja Morant, and Zach's straight line quickness helps him stay attached when he's moving in the same plane as his mark. For instance, a big wing like Brandon Ingram probably isn't going by him with a hard drive left like this. But when Levine's at the point of attack, he's vulnerable to changes in direction like this one on the ball. His lateral agility lags behind his north to south speed, and that can impact his screen navigation, where his hips can be somewhat stiff, bending himself around big men. His footwork is inconsistent on these plays. He can't wrap his lead leg around Rudy Gobert, so he's pancaked out of the play as a result. And on this one, he's bracing for a screen because he's unsure where it is. I, I, don't, I don't know what that is, actually. He's prone to sitting his weight back a bit on his heels, which can lead to separation with ball handlers, and in this case, a flyby for an open three. He's also vulnerable to crossovers because of this, trying to run straight around screens instead of sliding or shuffling laterally. If he's not too compromised, he's so physically gifted that he can quickly recover, slamming on the brakes and backpedaling his way into great position here. But the challenge for Zach is not overcorrecting on these recoveries. He moves the wrong way on this, then scrambles to stay in position and bites unnecessarily hard on this pump fake. And once he falls behind the play, he can get overzealous jumping around from up fake to up fake like this. 
This habit makes closeouts a bit adventurous, where his center of gravity is really high because he's prematurely contesting. And while it's a foul on this play, this one's just a miscalibrated lunge at the ball and a full-on breakdown because of it. Levine does have occasional lapses in awareness like this. He's not great at locating man and ball at the same time. And here he's ball watching and forgets he's guarding Steph Curry. And the whole league knows that is way too much airspace. Still, he's a fairly engaged defender. And more of his off-ball lapses are subtle. For instance, being a touch late on an extra rotation like this. He's not great zoning up the weak side, but he will play many of these passing lanes by the book, which can lead to steals. And while he's not a particularly disruptive defender, he's got decent enough hands to dig in for deflections and force some turnovers. Since he's not much of a defensive playmaker, impact metrics view him as a pretty weak defender, which limits his overall standing in these stats. Despite his vertical exploits, he's not much of a presence at the rim, but he has looked a bit sharper on that end in the early part of the 2022 season, and I actually don't think he's that much of a negative as an overall defender right now. On offense, his vanilla flavor of playmaking keeps him from superstardom. He's not really an ideal number one option because of it, but he is an excellent scorer, and I think his shooting, slashing, and movement play quite well on good offensive teams. And so right now, I see Zach Levine as a borderline or even low-level all-star player. If you want more content, check out patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. Our in-season proprietary stats are debuting next week for 2022. We've got a Discord community with live Q&As every month and much more. I hope that you are enjoying the young 2022 season as much as I am. And of course, I hope that you're having a great day.